We fucking made it to town. We're gonna buy some potions. Yes. Need to heal our psychic wounds. Salute, bud. Oh, what are we drinking? What do I These got here? These ones are fucking... Squints. Actually, a fucking whole half case of squint sunflower fucking Chills. seed goes that I found in the back from July. And it tastes even better than it did the first time. Yeah, well, fuck, man. It's great to be back here. It's been two weeks two since we've made an weeks. episode due to some fucking unfortunate Shit. COVID happenings. Unrelated to either of us, thankfully. Yeah, it yeah. Really, but fucking it fucking... It's, it's felt like a month. It has Holy felt that way, crap. so Maybe we'd like longer. to welcome you fucking guys, and even ourselves, back to Gaming Under the Influence at Green Dragon CVR with Mike and Alex, here to talk to you again about fucking video games. Fucking video games. It's been too oh, long. This yeah. is going to stand in for our episode 50 and 51, I suppose. How are we going to count this? Uh, it depends how long we go. I guess we will see. And yeah. uh, what's new with you, man? How's life been in the gaming fucking uh, You universe? know what? Actually, fuck, it's been pretty epic if you uh consider i think the last time we recorded was yeah, after to fucking discuss today. i finished spider-man and then i must have gone on a sony first party kick there was that that sunday where i, I was sitting in my basement and i was i messaged you i'm like i don't know what to play man you're like ah oh, fuck play death stranding and i was like ah, for some reason i don't know i just i wasn't going to and then uh, i jumped right on it and i pretty much fucking took it all the way to the end I beat it that day. It was fucking... It was... Yeah, it was nuts. It was fucking and, nuts. Wow. What an epic fucking ending, right? And then the week after that, which would have been the past weekend, I finished uh, Ghost of Tsushima. So, some unexpected, uh, you know, completions there. I, I didn't think I would get to the end of either one. Death Stranding, I really wanted to. Like, that one, I, I definitely want to get done uh, before next gen. But uh, Ghost of Tsushima, never thought I would. But... At Any the closing same time, thoughts on either uh, of those games before we I mean, move on? What do you think about the ending of Death Stranding? Death Stranding goes without saying what an epic ending, like typical Kojima, you know? Yeah. It, just, uh, it was fucking, fucking strange, a bit of fuckery in long, there, right? Long, you know, very long <laughs> cinematic segments, cutscenes, whatever you want to call them. Like, I, it's, it's, it's hard to put into words. It's so, you know, confusing and fucking <laughs> just nutty. But I like the whole... Um, the extin extinction entity thing where too, yeah. Amelie was, you know, we've talked about it before. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Um, yeah. I can't, I feel like I can't remember, but I think there was like some surprises there. I mean, you you find out about uh, Sam's yeah. father is, um, Cliff. what's his name? Cliff. Yeah. Cliff Unger. Whole pile of surprises. Yeah. There's just, there's. All those people just, are just associated, I guess. Hey? Yeah. It throws all kinds of shit at yeah. you, which, it, you know, I don't know. Some people said maybe it was kind of, um predictable but I, I never found that i don't know uh, maybe but i mean i don't really fucking one way or the other to me yeah like, like it's just it I, was never I like the but... structure of it you know it's, mm -hmm. it's fucking sick how like uh, at least in the world that he built there like these extinction entities are like presumptions of the way that the universe is and you have mm -hmm. fucking emails from the evo devo biologists there talking about how his research reveals that the death stranding is like a, just a an exorbitable part of evolution on the planet earth you know and like it's gonna happen anyways, but yeah, fucking Amelie sense. there, like, she knows this, she, you know, fucking you know that, but you're like, man, let's fucking stop and smell the dying flower for a little <laughs> while, right? Like, you know what, I actually, I really like that, um, sort of even just how the, the story was told throughout the game, where you would have these flashbacks, um, when you jack into BB, you'd see, yeah. like, through, you would think his perspective, right? Because it sort of shows BB, and then it cuts to Cliff speaking to BB, and, and, you know, yeah. and then... As the story unravels, you find, they sort of tie up all the loose ends. You find out that uh, the BB yeah. was Sam, right? Yeah. He was the original BB, and they took him out of the pod and, and raised him as a... Pretty yeah. much, like him getting shot there. Like, it fucking initiated the whole thing. Yeah. I fucking... I love that, how, like, they, they kept going sort of back and forth and just yeah, unraveling too. parts of the story. It's just fucking... Everything fell it's, into place, yeah. It's a Kojima mind fuck, but by the end of it, you feel like... It all just sort of clicked and made sense, it's and everything like, fucking that. There's a barrier to entry in terms yeah. of the vocabulary and shit, but like all of the parts, once you get what they're supposed to be doing, it yeah. makes great sense. Yeah, it's beautiful. I, I fucking love it. I, I, I yeah, it was I, definitely one yeah. of my favorite yeah. fucking games I've played in it, recent it, <laughs> years, probably. Like it's yeah. just incredible. It's easily one of my favorite yeah. games of all time. It's fucking amazing, Death Yeah, it's incredible. What about Tsushima though? Fuck, Tsushima, I Tsushima myself. Uh, not to the same effect, but I also liked. Uh, I liked the ending of it. I, I feel. Like like i would never have finished it if i didn't just beeline through act three and like the second half of act two because the world is just so massive mm -hmm. there's so many things to do there's so many side quests i didn't even bother doing like i don't know how much of this shit you know 
you would consider to do to get the full experience let's say i don't know what that even means but there's a lot there so like from the standpoint of if you want a game to sink 120 hours to and you can put up with it by all means this is great like it's a wonderful package in that sense but it's just way too fucking bloated for me i can't do it so i started ignoring all the side quests which I think I actually did for the most part of the game, but I started ignoring, you know, the when you see the bird flying, taking you to a shrine or to a... Yeah. To, like, yeah. I just I started ignoring some you of that when RPG bloat. Right? Yeah, exactly. And I just beelined through the story, and I liked it. It's a little bit cheesy, some of the, you know, uh, personal relationships between Jin and uh, um, Lord Shumara, his uncle. It, it gets kind of cheesy because you know he wants to adopt him. He's like, "All right, you're gonna be my son." And like it's so, part, it's it's like, okay, that's nice, you know. And then like they fight, and it's like, okay, it's kind of you know cliche. They fight, but what I liked about obviously this is the we're well past this, but this whole thing is fucking spoilerific. Um, I like that at the end. After the fighting, like, you pretty much, you and your uncle, like, you're finished. Uh, Jin and his uncle, they're done. Um, and you you become, they, they imprison you for what you did. Basically, you defeated all the fucking bunch of Mongolians, but you did so by poisoning them and stabbing them in the back, which is obviously against the whole honor code of the samurai, right? So, your uncle and Jin, they're, like, finished. And he throws you in jail, and then you have to escape. And then... At the end of the game, specifically, what I liked was that it wasn't like a cheesy happy ending. Like, they just forgot it all happened. They're like, oh, it's okay. You drove the Mongolians. I will forgive you about this. They were like, no, fuck that. The Shogun disbanded the whole Sakai clan, and he ordered Lord Shimra to kill Jin. And, like, the whole time, Lord Shimra was saying, like, this is punishment for me, not you. He's like, I've been ordered to kill you. I don't want to. Like, basically, he was crying the whole time. Like, it was it was well done. Like, he was emotional about it. And then you fight him. He's the last boss, technically, right? The last, like, duel. And uh, at the end, you have the option to kill him or to spare him. And I guess in the context of the game, they say he says that if you spare him, it's even more like shame yeah, because sure. he has to live knowing He's that he failed be the fucking cast. yeah like just everything fucking yeah. he just failed at everything like the fucking the Sakai clan was disbanded he's no longer a samurai he couldn't even finish his last uh, you know assignment to kill Jin like just so whatever so I did what I think anyway should be the canon ending and I killed him and it's like a beautiful scene like you, he stabs him and you see them side by side and it's like all the fucking, you know, the foliage and the trees are falling. I mean, the, the leaves are falling. It's all like Fuck, the red leaves. Dude, like, thing. just, I took screenshots. I'll show you. Just the, the ending scene was so beautiful after he stabs them and they're just looking at each other in the eye. They're both, like, crying. Like, I think the ending was pretty fucking well done. Fuck, just, like, the journey there is like, oh, you fucking, you can't do everything. It's too much. Great world and everything, but just bloated. Too much stuff. But you if know, you can... Like I said, either beeline or slog through it. It, it was nice. Yeah. And it, it also kind of, you know, tied it all up. And then it's like a, you know, typical open world game throws you back in the world and you can continue on if, if you want. I probably won't, but yeah. yeah. That's sick, man. It sounds really good, actually. Yeah. The, the, it, it, aside from the some of the that. cheesy moments along the way, like the final moments with Jin and Lord Chimmer are fucking, they're pretty badass. It's cool. It's crazy. I liked it, yeah. You know, this reminds me of fucking The Witcher 3, which I recently picked up after not touching it for years. Like, my Fuck. save files in this game, they go from, like, 2015, 2017, 2020. 19, you know? 20. <laughs> is that the fault of the game or me? Like, whoever's fault it is, I guess. I think it's try us to... a little bit, but yeah, maybe not. Yeah, a bit of both. Yeah, like, a bit of both, yeah. At the same time, like, maybe it's okay to fucking have these things that, like, you just put down for years and you go back when you're fucking, again, like, inured to the sensation of familiarity. You mm -hmm. kind of lose your, you know? And again, the mechanics are interesting to you and they're fucking engaging, right? Like, yeah, did maybe that's a barrier that, that, that one day games will have to fucking, you know, surmount that like I'm playing Ghost of Tsushima and like by the 50th Mongol camp, I don't give a fuck. Yeah, it's too much. I don't much. give a fuck. I'm sorry. Yeah. Like, it doesn't have that purity of fucking, of doesn't of, even have the same sensation. weight. Like, yeah. Like, you know, just... like you can travel across the continent in Death Stranding and there's a fucking progression to it that fucking ensures 
that I don't know. At least for me, it carried me through, man. I yeah. didn't fucking once say like I'm not gonna do this. Like I played that constantly. I didn't Maybe drop, I'm a, you know? an outlier because lately I've been dropping every game. But like same yeah. to the, your point there, I dropped Spider Man and now I finished it. Dropped Death Stranding for not that much yeah. time because it came out yeah less than a year less ago. than a year ago. But I finished it now. Same thing goes Tsushima. I played it couple maybe a week or two solid when it came out dropped in now i finished it's like me for Sekiro too man yeah like for those ones it's because of the fucking because they're hard and i'm a bitch yeah I mean, you know but <laughs> that makes sense for the other ones is because they're fucking just just, just so it's a lot and I'm yeah fucking not into it's like that, if you had you to know? watch the same movie every night even if new yeah. stuff is happening you eventually yeah. like you yeah. just it's want like, something right, else yeah, right exactly i find yeah. that i'm i've always been that way with video games it's probably why i never beat a lot of games when i was a kid yeah. because I didn't have something else to move on to. I just got bored of it, and I would just, like drop a game. Then maybe you know, pick it up a year, fucking two down the road. I always beat games in that fashion. I feel like my whole life, I would pick things up later on and finish them. A few exceptions, obviously, but like if Final Fantasy VII Remake, I crushed that when it came out this year. I beat it within like a week or two, which is like that. That one I put down for, for months. Yeah, yeah, beat it recently. yeah. yeah. <laughs> But it's because I got to this beefy section in the middle of where it's... Yeah, I'm there now on hard mode, and I'm like, why am I doing this? Like, what the I couldn't fuck? fucking do this. I couldn't leave the side missions because of my neuroses. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't not... You know, I couldn't finish them either. They're a pain in the not, ass. They're a pain in the ass, but there's not that many, and they're not very long. It makes no. it a little bit more digestible, actually, but... Yeah, I have bosses in them and stuff. Yeah, that's cool. true, yeah. That was a great game, and I did like it. There were some parts I felt could be... Anyways. <laughs> yeah, we've, <laughs> getting we've gone, gone there and back, shit, yeah. You know? I think that... To distill a fucking point from all of that rambling, you know, it's something to consider, I guess, when you're constructing a game of this fucking nature, like not one that's going to challenge you in terms of its difficulty, but in terms of its just fucking massiveness, like just sheer fucking, you yeah, really like think twice, you know, do it doesn't need to be that fucking massive. Like, again, I keep talking about this. One of my favorite games this year was Maneater. It was an open world mm -hmm. fucking action adventure game i suppose where you play as a fucking shark in the ocean and you beat it in, i beat it in 16 hours i platinum it i've never platinum a game in my life that was the first bastard <laughs> just to say though like look at it right like you know it's an open yeah. world game but you can do everything in the fucking game in 16 hours and like it stands out in my mind as like an incredible like i can't even tell you how fondly i remember that game. oh i know <laughs> i fucking love that game i know you know i yeah. would give it like it's easily in my in my opinion a contender for game of this yeah. year easily <laughs> easily so i don't just know like totally what? focused and, yeah, and like exactly. streamlined yeah. it's straight, straight up good focus, yeah. yeah focus games that's, yeah. that's 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 good whether they're 16 hours or 80 hours long it's important that they have a fucking core component that all of the other fucking things revolve around usually a core component if it's related to the universe and it's inner logic mm -hmm. that would be even better and you know, I guess this kind of brings us to fucking Watch Dogs Legion, which I've been playing recently too, you Watch know? Dogs Legion. We had some <laughs> interesting conversations before you played this game. Yeah, we did. But and how, like, neither of us really gave a fucking fifth yeah, of a fuck about it. Mostly right? negative. Oh, yeah. man. This, like, a fucking amorphous, like, non-protagonist, like, mess of political correctness from, and stupidity, right? Yeah, from the first time, like, they announced it, the first trailer I saw, I don't remember what it was, but... I remember being immediately like dismissive of it. I was like, I'm not interested yeah. in this game. Yeah, me too. Also, like to be fair, I have a little bit of bias against Ubisoft just because I fucking lately can't stand Ubisoft. So I have to take that into you know factor that in. But it is a thing. Um, but fucking apparently, we've been wrong about all of this. Apparently so, man. <laughs> But as for being wrong about Watch Dogs Legion, you know, it's hard to even say that necessarily any of the things that you just fucking delineated were wrong. Like, it is a game that's fucking kind of goofy in terms of its, like, bubblegum fucking fashionable political rapper that's obviously yeah. meant to appeal to people with a certain view of contemporary politics. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, you know, fucking, I, I'm actually here definitely going to fucking appeal to my notes because they're fucking there's too much shit to say about this game i fucking had such a great time with it it blew my mind yes just yesterday alone i probably played it for a good 10 hours like, yeah I, I noticed you online I on the fucking, ps4 I, there's nothing else for me to say <laughs> i was other surprised than, yeah you know so definitely it's fucking wrapped in this kind of odious like bubblegum politics aesthetic that's inspired by current events but fucking it may be understood you know i think it's valid to understand it like in the same way that we understand the division two you know if the division two kind of fucking is inspired by like a fucking rustic like you know american conservative politics this one is fucking 
an irreverent pastiche of fucking like left wing fucking tropes <laughs> and it builds them into like a techno thriller that in my opinion you know it may as well be fucking set in middle earth for all of its relevance to the real world or even its comprehension of political subject matter like the political subject matter buddy is fucking frankly absurd i'm sure nobody who made this game intended to fucking insert the quote-unquote messages into it that you find but if one were looking mm -hmm. for messages like what would the message be that 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 fucking you know this like bolshevik undertone that this like dictatorship of the proletariat like a vanguard party is necessary to inspire revolution in the sheepish masses <laughs> you know like oh all i gotta see is like a fucking thing burning on the side of a building and all of a sudden i'm cool with being shot in the face that's all it takes <laughs> like it's it's goofy in that respect you know if you're looking for some kind of fucking advocacy in it it's obviously fucking dumb like but what we do get is a fairly fucking coherent an intelligent presentation of general concepts like tyranny and revolution depicted in this fucking real world place in a near future fucking setting with like all these technological advancements and the fucking main driver of the story is this fucking place is spiraling into actual tyranny like complete with like you know government sanction like human trafficking of immigrants and shit like that Holy but like fuck. you know walking around the city of london you see like neo neon holograms like fucking dancing on the face of like all of these famous monuments and shit like piccadilly yeah, station it's almost like cyberpunk in, uh, yeah it is like yeah. that remember in uh, fucking call of duty piccadilly station that yeah yeah, yeah you're in there but it's all fucking sci-fi up and shit like that it's cool it's, it's pretty crazy like you see fucking ar statues like all these laser statues on the london bridge and there's all this drone traffic all the time flying around and the drones have like arms they're like counter-terrorism drones like scanning people's faces looking for dead sex specifically and like in your hand and at all times you have a fucking device that you can look at somebody and because of your hacker proclivities you can like see the details of their day-to-day -day life literally where they sleep like oh what God. they do for a living like fucking what they like to eat and shit like that you know and an interesting thing about this game something that caused us to criticize it before actually is that there's not really a protagonist you know there's not fucking one person that is the focus of the narrative and that fucking obviously like as a video game player your initial you know apprehension is like yeah, that to you me... You have initial apprehension anyways. You're like, what the fuck is that? Yeah, that was sense, very but. dismissive of that. Uh. Like, we just talked about this before we started recording. Something we complain about a lot is this fucking, these humanist, like, narratives where it's all touchy-feely and about this guy and his dad and some fucking kind of stupid shit like that. This story totally avoids that. Like, it's not that the characters are ciphers. Actually, each NPC in the world that has, as I just explained, like, a fucking backstory and a schedule and, like, some kind of whatnot but like this is actually the story of dead sec in london it's the fucking story of the organization you know it's the story is tantamount to a fucking sequence of events surrounding this organization and not any particular person right right like it, right it's a dystopian universe with one central like tension or antagonism and the resolution of this fucking antagonism drives like the whole story and the development of the action right like and that fucking antagonism is dead sec liberating london one neighborhood at a time and building an army fucking in the face of this like weird fascist like private military corporation albion right like that's the whole fucking thing you know and <clears throat> in that sense like i just said it's got no fucking real relation to real world politics that's definitely true but it does for like the fucking, better yeah yeah for the better i suppose but it does riff <laughs> on these like universal themes that fucking apply like to the human mind as well as to human society right like and these themes are clear from the outset you know dead sex strives to like reduce society back to its like fucking you know they're in these like into its molecular fucking fundaments you know like it's mm -hmm. unrestrained like fucking base of difference and you know there's people talking about big ben and blah 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 and like fucking our parliamentary democracy and this and that shit but like let's be fucking real there's a bunch of people like murdering dudes and fucking lighting shit on fire yeah it's and almost like chaos and fucking, crashing shit to like, you know, like dissolve a, society entirely yeah. right like yeah this you know there there's this fucking <clears throat> They're seeking this molecular fucking social death that repels the state organism and facilitates like fucking, you know, uh, the reconstruction of something new, I guess, instead of like a fucking, you know, what we can call like a fucking homeostatic drive, like this fascistic one that suppresses difference and it seeks like equilibrium and straightforwardness. You know, these are like two tensions that every organism exhibits. It's like, mm. it's silly in its fucking, you know, it's appealed to like popular shit, but it's not silly in using these two ideas to build a universe and a story. That's, you know, fucking the story of everything really, right? Like yeah, even yeah. one thing, like, is it fucking evolving or is it staying the same, right? Like <laughs> that's the story of it, right? You know, between fucking molecular fucking dissolution and molar like fucking equilibrium, right? And like that molar equilibrium is Albion and it's fucking weird like police state and the molecular revolution, like unleashing all of the latent forces of society to build something new. Literally here, like recruiting people piece by piece into yeah. your organization, unleashing their fucking potential. You know, uh, that's that's fucking represented by DedSec, right? So it's, it's, it's dumb, like 
in terms again of its engagement with the real world but it's not dumb in terms of the concept set you know at work in fucking this world building right like if one were not inclined to affiliate with any of the political fucking shit it alludes to mm -hmm. you would take fucking great pleasure in this almost like weird cyberpunk universe like, yeah. with holograms and fucking strange like dystopian technology and like a fascist police state and stuff like it's it's all very cool shit and it can't be enough for some guy like me who like is heavily invested in many of the ideas that show and i don't like him at all right like, <laughs> i can fucking enjoy this game wholeheartedly yeah. right it, and that's you know? the biggest surprise yeah that, yeah came out of this basically yeah. like to the yeah. point where i i want to give it a try too now oh, where, yeah. and i completely wrote it off before it came out but yeah it's a classic example like I, I, we love to be wrong about something yeah, yeah. you know about what i mean like, like this we sure, would have right? loved to have been wrong about anthem but that was <laughs> only bring yeah. up anthem because yeah. we were talking about it before that's that's what the a fucking joke. A failure of its but, format, uh, though, I think. yeah that was that was on it yeah totally i think one of the level. crucial fucking aspects of this game succeeding in my opinion is that like you know in my view, between Far Cry 5 and this game, like Ubisoft fucking had these weird like looter RPG mechanics incorporated Just into their games, like numerical progression and shit everything, yeah. that were like fucking ripe for, you know, fucking up progression. Like they, yeah. you know, in Ghost Recon, whatever the fuck the most recent one, Breakpoint, Breakpoint they had yeah. like these fucking weird drone or things or whatever. that were supposed to be like gear checks against you that force you to grind out fucking. This game doesn't have like, you know, levels or fucking mm -hmm. stats on your guns or any shit like that like each character has certain abilities they do or do not have them you can like get points to unlock more in like tech like you can unlock like an ar cloak for your guys or a non-lethal shotgun or whatever the fuck but it's not like they get better or worse stat wise you know yeah so fucking all your cards are on the table at once the progression is in terms of again just building your squad amassing people into it right like I, but I guess that's why, like, I wrote it off right away, and maybe you too. Yeah, that just, yeah. Just based on Ubisoft's last couple releases, that sort of, yeah. you know, we yeah. kind of expected it to be the same yeah, thing I with tons to of microtransactions yeah, and yeah. fucking with the progression of the thing, yeah, right? You're yeah. Just destroying it for yeah. for me. Like, I didn't play Odyssey because of that. I think though, like, fucking this game because it departs from that looter style fucking progression it's not as ripe for fucking exploitation as those other yeah. games like we instead well what we got here better. is like a fucking razor focused loop kind of like death yeah. stranding in my opinion you know like yeah the moment to moment gameplay is kind of conventional third person shooting and exploration but there's fucking some crazy like fucking freedom of motion there's like flying you can fly anywhere That's we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit more later though there's other points to fucking yeah, flight is actually, you know, possible early on, you know, I'll say, though, for sure. And it appears that all abilities do have scalable fucking segments. Like, you can climb up anything. There's, like, in Assassin's Creed, there's, like, yellow pipes and shit. Like, you oh, see, really? you're supposed to, yeah. Oh, cool. Any building can be scaled. And usually, like, in the vicinity, there's some kind of fucking docking station where you can find a... You can summon, like, a construction drone, a cargo drone that you can stand on top of and fly and all fly, around the yeah. city. That's crazy. It's crazy fucking shit, yeah. I, I really do like that, like... You know, we should talk about this at the end of our fucking segment here, how, like, open world games need, like, more in fucking innovative yeah, movement yeah. systems. That's that's an important point. But uh, in addition to all of this crazy stuff, you know, you got that pretty competent third-person shooting with fucking interesting fucking guns and mechanics. You have fucking crazy freedom of movement, the likes of which I can hardly think of an equivalent in... Uh, in, in any open world game that I've ever fucking played. I played a lot of them, too. But there's also, like, <laughs> these weird platforming segments, man, where you, like, fucking you fucking hack into a spider drone and you gotta like climb to the top of big ben to hack the fucking ar oh, screen wow. there and put like dead sec propaganda on it or some <laughs> shit like that right but like it's like a fucking level of crash bandicoot practically you're like fucking oh, jumping. Really? there's like turning gears and like weird fucking shit you gotta go in the <laughs> oh, middle of fuck. yeah it's like what the fuck that's <laughs> hilarious and it takes like one minute it's not yeah. seriously and when you die it puts you right back where you fucking die it's, okay it's yeah. not seriously challenging but it does like insert these interesting like fucking, that's cool yeah i dig that yeah it, but again, like in the service of one fucking singular goal in all cases, you know, like there's all of these platforming fucking segments and all this fucking shit, but the whole premise is rebuilding the organization of DeadSec in London. And that motivates even the fucking collectibles, uh, you know, the skill points that you fucking find, like all of the fucking platforming, like in all these cases, all of the things that you're doing, every reward always consists of a fucking guy to add to your squad that has unique abilities that allow you to engage in the world in a different way, you know, with the world in a different way, excuse me. It's really, really cool. And in terms of like fucking actual gameplay in the world, the only things there are to do is fucking the story missions, take over the maps by doing literally just three missions in each zone. And you okay, take over yeah. the map and you get like a premium operative with like a spy oh, nice. or a hitman or like some crazy shit like that. And on top of that, you collect fucking ability points to unlock tech. That's it. 
and wow. fucking money for clothes. There's no, there's no like pigeons or like racing side quests. There's like <laughs> a boxing match. It, you can do like bare knuckle boxing. But yeah. The purpose of doing that is to recruit boxers. Recruit to your a fucking, fucking squad. guy. Yeah. yeah. It's sick. Like that's, everything has a singular. That part focus. of it like reminds me of Death Stranding, yeah. right? In yeah, the sense too. that me it too. it takes an open world, and instead of like the trend was always, oh, it's bigger. There's yeah. more, and it's like no, there's fucking. Yeah. you know a little bit less and it's focused and, and I think so, it yeah. just feels co- cohesive right like it's yeah. just oh There's and no, that's what I want right and that's what I want nowadays yeah for sure yeah you don't want to have that fucking it's sense of exasperation oh. like just you're tired you know it, here there, there's no fucking looter RPG elements at all just like a pool of general unlockable abilities that uh, you can give them to anyone while the point of getting the different operatives is each of them have like a few sets of passive stats if they're mm-hmm. premium ones they're good ones and they have like a fucking weapon or two that you can't equip on other characters that just come with them, you know? Cool. And uh, that's that's the whole fucking loop, man. You go through the map conquering it so that once you conquer it, you can both recruit people easier within that zone and also it gives you like a sick operative for conquering that oh, zone okay. too. And then you do the fucking story missions and that's the end of the game. I can't imagine it taking that long. Like yeah. in playing it for eight or 10 hours, I already took over two or three zones. I fucking nice. did a few number of story missions. It's yeah, it's a great game, man. Uh, I'm having a fucking blast with it. I'm fucking... I'm happy to hear that, that yeah. it uh, didn't go the way we thought it was yeah. going to go because, fuck, like, let's be real, yeah. man. That's that's good to hear that, you know, especially Ubisoft. Like I said, I almost had, like, an immediate bias against them lately because of Me fucking too. all the shit they insert in their games and the way they, yeah. they fondle them to make I them more sure lucrative, have, like, right? like, numerical progression systems like, like Breakpoint that would make it just fucking a bummer to play, right? Yeah, like, exactly. I like, hate that sensation ugh. that your skill in a fucking segment is... I, I remember playing Odyssey for fucking 20 minutes, literally. And I'm <laughs> like, all right, I'm going to go fucking play this guy. And, you know, I go to fight some dude. He's, like, level six and I'm level one. And no matter what you do, it's just, you know, unless you hide in the bushes and fucking continually sneak attack him for two hours, like, oh, you just God. can't beat this guy because yeah. of the way the fucking numbers are stacked. Like, yeah. I hate that shit. This game avoids that. Like, Not like in a Souls where you literally have people running through doing, um, yeah, like, it's no hit runs that, and, yeah. like, no level up. Like, <laughs> I mean, maybe. Just it, because you, you can, yeah. I mean, it's fucking totally, yeah. you know, I mean, almost Souls impossible, is, possible but because of fucking skill can compensate for your lack of mathematical fucking yeah exactly aptitude, but these, these games, games it's just it's leans not, on that yeah, yeah it leans on and, and, and the reason it. for that is to exploit yeah, exactly to make right, it more yeah. lucrative right so this game doesn't seem to have ah. that like they do have microtransactions you know what you can buy is those prestige operatives that you unlock just for taking over a zone right which again takes like fucking <laughs> i have a video of doing it in half an hour it's playing right now you know it's it's like I don't know why you would fucking do that. Yeah, see, like, I don't care if a and game has that because I... progression? Like, that's yeah, the whole reward of that's, doing that's it. That's the like, whole why? thing, yeah. I don't know. Uh, it's like, you could pay 50 bucks to see the final cinematic of the game right now. Like, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so... I, 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 yeah. One last fucking thing that yeah. I'd like to note is how they handle death, you know? They have a permadeath mode, which yeah, makes it fucking pretty nuts. cool. That's it, nutty. it must make it so that, like, when you're about to undertake a difficult mission, you're like, all right, who the fuck should I... You probably <laughs> want to send your shit guy first. Do you need to just recruit, like, a bunch of, like, low-level, like, deplorable fucking... Maybe if you're playing the permadeath <laughs> mode, it might be that way. <laughs> yeah. But I wouldn't... They don't really have levels. They just do or do not have good abilities. Like, some guys okay. just come with one ability. Or some guys, because they're all randomly generated, will just have negative ones. Like, they oh, die fuck, easy. Really? They can't roll or run. <laughs> And they fucking, you know, <laughs> Poor just, guy. just bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> and they walk, useless. Yeah, they just have terrible. So you wouldn't want to recruit them. Yeah. I didn't but, know that. It's randomly generated. Like, yeah, I yeah. mean, there must be like yeah, a huge fucking. Generated. Every yeah. single NPC yeah. has a schedule and traits and stuff like oh, that. Okay, yeah. So, but fuck, you don't. Like, I mean, I, I haven't played for 100 hours, but I haven't really fucking noticed any overlapping NPCs. Like, I haven't seen any faces that look the same. Mm-hmm. You can tell. A couple of the female gangster chick voices are like the same voice, like modulated differently. For okay. Sure. Yeah, but yeah. At least it's modulated differently. <laughs> yeah. It's not the same fucking voice. Like you can right. tell the same person is doing it, but it's like uh, you know, modified. And there must be thousands of of, of uh, recruitable, like everyone that you see, even the fucking bad guys. Like, if you don't fucking get them to hate your organization somehow, they can be recruited, and you can like infiltrate albion like fucking safe houses and shit with the guy with the uniform without nice. attracting attention it's just an incredible game man yeah like yeah. what what sounded like a stupid gimmick to make it a shit game actually turned into like pretty fucking astounding basis for a game you know it's like this weird mix of like pokemon and fucking flying <laughs> and like fucking pokemon death stranding like games, yeah what the yeah. fuck you're just collecting people and yeah. like 
You're like, all right, I gotta fucking building infiltrate a, this building. Building a party of humans. Yeah, man. <laughs> based on the kind of people, based on the kind of fucking mission you're gonna undertake, based on whether you want to kill people or not, based on whether you that's know, cool. You, that's who you choose the operative you send into that's the fucking sick. mission. Yeah, it's, it's killer. And I, I can't fucking overemphasize how sick it is to fucking fly. It's so sick to fly in an open world game. I like realize that. If you get a construction worker, you can summon a flying drone at any time. So I fucking just immediately, you know, read, like, before even doing it, that one of the first missions in the game, you get to recruit one, and, like, man. Did it right away. <laughs> yeah, it's so good. Oh, it's so that's, satisfying. That's part of, like, for me, what kept me in uh, Spider-Man, honestly. It's just the, yeah. the traversal. And that, we, we recently brought this up and me yeah, talked you know, about it again, because it just came up in Watch Dogs again. Yeah. Like, it that, is fucking crucial. There to needs to be, world. yeah. Like, grabs you. We were, I can't even believe we were just talking about this, weren't yeah, we? Yeah. I think the video title was even something about it, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. In the, the last, centrality the last of podcast. Movement. Yeah. yeah. Like, and and it came up again in Watch Dogs. It's amazing. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, it's. If it was like I was having a good time with the game until that, but then I was like, "Can you fucking actually just fly around? Is that yeah. a thing? It's not That's like anyway limited. You just you just wow, go. Man. My mind was like, <sighs> "Did you try to like go as high as you can? Like, yeah, you can't let go that you out, Obviously, yeah, it caps yeah, you for sure. But like, you can go to the top of all of the buildings. Like, it's That's supposed sick. to be explored yeah. at that level, right? It's yeah. vertical, you know." See that that's it's like that's huge. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah, it's 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 actually unreal, you know? There's a lot of open world world games that have sort of expanded in that capacity. I mean, I know yeah. for me a fucking Breath of the Wild always comes up because I remember reading yeah, you the interviews that to me the other day. That's good. Yeah, when um, they were designing it, they wanted it to, they called it like an open air game instead of open world because they wanted it to be like very vertical and there's huge mountains and you can climb any surface the same way as long as your stamina keeps up. Um and then with the that like paraglider thing, you you can just jump off of any mountain cliff. There's the the towers. I forgot what they're called, but so that whole like traversal, what traverse? I can never say that word. Traversal was it was one of the original games for me that I saw like a li little bit of an expansion to that. And instead of you know open world games are always like oh you're in the street and jacking yeah, fucking yeah. cars and driving around and. I know that's how it like got started with Grand Theft Auto and everything, but it's crazy to see what they can come up with now and how they can expand on that idea. And I think so. Breath of the Wild was one of them. Um, I would <laughs> consider the Death Stranding. World, maybe, yeah. yeah, Death Stranding because of all the stuff you can build and that it I even shares online with other players. Like what the yeah. in a single yeah. player game like that game like that's fucking, fucking crazy. Like the way that it made freedom of motion like your fucking goal. I yeah, love that. I love that. Great. It's that addictive was, for the, me. Yeah, yeah, the goal was the goal. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, nuts, man. It, I, it's I cool love to any see game all that this. has the, the. You remember Bloodstained we were talking about a year ago? I love yeah. that too. I fucking love it Just so much. Just being able to like fly at so the much. end, basically. Yeah. yeah now it makes it like I'm gonna go play fucking what Red Dead or Horizon. It's like all right, now I got to this point over here, and you gotta call your stupid horse thing. Yeah. Robot horse or man horse, whatever the fuck. Yeah. You know, you gotta trot over there. Even Ghost of uh, Tsushima, by the time I was beelining through to the end, I was just fast traveling to every point yeah. because I don't fucking yeah, ride through. Like I was, I'm, I was bored of, of the world and exploring all the the hot springs and the bamboo things and the shrines and the. I was just like, fuck it, right? Just beeline to the fucking thing. I fucking feel you, man. Yeah, it's cool that um, that's like the trend because if, if, even you know, I remember before we started this channel. A lot of what we talked about in terms of open world games was that we were the tedium bored and the and the yeah the tedious nature wonder, of buddy, them. How much so, of the tedium reduces to the fucking traversal? It, yeah, maybe that's how much it. Of that? Yeah, like, think about it. Like you know, we're complaining about all this shit, and you're like, how much of it has to do with the fact that probably all of it that you fucking you're at point A, and it's like go to point B, and it's like <laughs> way yeah. down there, and, and you're then, like ah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. In The Witcher, like which I'm playing right now too, you gotta walk first before even fast traveling to some other fucking place. It's like before. Skyrim, man. Eh? Oh my god! And you're like, I don't want to do it. Just, yeah, I don't want to. It's not fun anymore. Eighty hours of riding this fucking horse, you know, it's not fun. This game, it is sick. Red it's Dead so fun. is the worst yeah. for that. Red Dead is oh, the worst. Oh my, for that. Red two, Dead fucking two specifically it oh. throttles you. It like fucking just chokes you fucking out, buddy. <laughs> Wow. I love the game to be fair, but yeah, it does fucking ah. yeah. I'm I'm still so stoked that like Watch Dogs fucking ended up yeah. being 
good. Like, I actually want to try it. I want to play too. it. It's sick, buddy. Yeah. I think you would enjoy it for sure. I probably would. I think anybody would enjoy it. It's an interesting approach to game design. Like, there's, there's fucking more points I'm going to unpack in the future about this fucking game, Definitely. buddy. Definitely. At the end of a generation of open world games, I guess this is one that adopts of a number of formula I enjoy from many of my favorite ones, and it fucking gets rid of that, like, fucking touchy-feely humanist narrative that I find so mm. obtrusive and many games I won't bother to list off for the 50th time to you and fucking, you know. Yeah, I feel like this whole generation saw, for us anyway, like a resurgence, almost like a... I don't know how to word it, but, like, it, they... There it was a change, circle, right? Like, like, yeah, yeah. It, it seems like open-world games became more interesting again due to yeah. like external maybe not so external factors but more yeah. fucking you know yeah it does feel just looking at the the whole thing of it and moving away from the bigger and better and you know yeah. we don't need bigger i'm better yeah but yeah. that's fucking uh, doesn't have know. to do with big that's for sure yeah exactly <laughs> well Fuck, man. I guess that's a pretty fucking thorough treatment of that game from what we can save it after the hours I put into it. Uh, anything else you want to cover this afternoon? I don't know. I think uh, fucking there's not much to say other than I'm still like painfully waiting for next gen to come. Like, yeah, no matter how close we get, it, it always seems like it's just it's so Too hard for me. Like, I know this is major, like, you know, get a fucking grip but like for me i'm excited and like i always get this way and like there's new consoles coming That's out like good, I'm, though. I, I understand you're excited man. <laughs> the I, days are like just slowly chugging uh you know i uh, i'm excited to play demon souls myself yeah basically demon souls is the big thing there yeah. for us yeah aside from just general new you know tech playing games with that fucking, loading screen yeah That'll stuff nice like too. that that tickles me so yeah goes without saying that next week can't come uh, fast enough that's right if we even get consoles Woo-hoo. well it's been fucking good thanks you guys, guys for uh, listening have a wonderful evening do check out watchdogs legion if you have the opportunity you won't be disappointed and uh we fucking love you see you soon fuck yeah take care <laughs>